Even though the turbo is now on the car, we aren't quite on the home stretch when it comes to building the big turbo kit for the TT. In fact, this is the time in the build where there's a little bit of a transition. Our focus now is shifting from removing all the old parts to making the new parts work on the car. And what that means is that we have a solid amount of design work that we need to do in order for us to really continue. There are three distinct parts of the car that we will need to design from scratch in order to make this kit actually work. Namely, the charge pipe, the intake, and the downpipe. And in order for us to really do this correctly, we're going to need to take it one step at a time, beginning by measuring what we need, followed by designing the part, and then finally we're going to have to get the parts to actually make our design. And that's just the preparation. That doesn't even take into account the fact that designs don't always translate well to the real world. That being said, as someone who absolutely loves designing things, this is the part I have been most looking forward to. So let's get started. While the weather outside might be on its way down temperature-wise for the year, my excitement for driving the TT again is only on its way up. We've made a good amount of progress so far, but I think things are going to ramp up a bit now that we're not dealing with seized bolts all day. Let's start up top. Designing a system to get the air into the turbo itself. Without doing that, we're not going to get too far. And we've got a lot of room to work with. But to narrow down our design a bit, let's use what was originally here for inspiration. We effectively need to create a passage of air from the inlet of the turbo to the MAF, which is attached to our new speed intake. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, there's a little bit more. On the stock turbo inlet pipe, there are a number of ports for various sensors and systems. And since this car is based on a recirculating MAF setup, we can't just delete them. We're gonna have to figure out a way to include them. That's not the biggest issue right now, though. The first thing we need to figure out are these heater core lines which completely block the intake path. And thankfully, there's a couple workarounds we can do. We can't exactly delete the lines, because otherwise we won't have a heater, but we can reroute them. And the easiest way to do that is to start at the very top. These are heater core quick disconnects for a Mark IV Jetta. And unlike what's on the car currently, these bend immediately down. The ones that are on the 225 just stick out straight. And in theory, since these are both Mark IV cars, they should be interchangeable. So I figured we'd start by tossing these on and seeing if it gets us just a little bit more clearance. This is easier said than done though. It turns out metal hard pipes that are part of the coolant system get quite hot when they're this close to the engine. And that completely melted the rubber that these hoses are made out of. So I had to physically cut them off in order to get them to be removed. And even then I had to go through and shave the end of this to even try to remove some of it. Overall, it seems like these were much due for a replacement anyways. With the bottom end cut off, we can now remove the top and test fit the new fittings. And the cool thing is, they work just fine since they're both Mark IV cars. Gotta love how these are basically Legos. Once I got these fitted, I now had the access needed to shave the rest of those melted rubber hoses off of the old hard pipes. And this took absolutely forever. It seems like so far the hardest part about this entire turbo process has been removing factory parts. It's a little frustrating, but it's definitely part of the process. With those lines cleaned up, however, we can move on to the actual rerouting process. At this point, I don't know how long of a hose to use. We're going to need to figure that out. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is to just try and toss on the old hoses and see how close they are. Then once we have two ideas for what we think will work, we'll go ahead and look for hoses that will actually work. And from the looks of it, we'd get a good amount of clearance by just running two S-shaped hoses. They need to be S-shaped specifically so that they don't crease when they're bending. 
Another good option would be to use an L-shaped hose and modify the hard pipe that's on the bottom. We'd have to cut a bit of it back, but it might get us a little bit extra clearance. Haven't quite decided on that one yet though, so let me know what you think. For now though, just mocking this up with two poorly fitting hoses gives us the idea of what kind of clearance we're going to have. And honestly, it's a ton better than I was expecting. They might end up touching the intake just a little bit, but that is way, way, way better than them completely blocking any possibility of an intake. Baby steps, in other words. And with these hoses out of the way now and added to the shopping list, we can get to measuring. And when I say measuring, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably what are you measuring? Well, there's actually a lot more than you would think. I'm going to treat this as effectively designing it from scratch, but that doesn't mean we can't use inspiration. And honestly, a really solid inspiration that kind of fits shape-wise is the old turbo inlet pipe. And this is a good rough shape to start with. It isn't, however, the right size. I don't at all want to bottleneck the turbo, so I need to determine just how wide everything is. So for starters, I measured the diameter of the MAF and the turbo itself. We want to use piping as close to this and hopefully not smaller in order to make the entire assembly. That way we don't restrict airflow. And as it turns out, these are both the same diameter, three and a quarter inch. In other words, in an ideal world, our whole intake will be that size. But like I mentioned earlier, we can't forget these ports since it's based on a recirculating system. So I also measured the size of the inlets on the original turbo inlet pipe. And with all these measurements, I started to draw out a potential system that we could use for our intake, namely silicone couplers and bead rolled aluminum pipes. Eventually we'll worry about making it look better, but for now we just care about functionality. And the only unknown I still have is how we're going to add those ports to the silicone. In other words, we now know all the parts we need to build the intake, hypothetically. We just need to order them. In my opinion, I'm thinking the charge pipe is going to be the easiest design project we have today. At its core, we need to connect the outlet of the turbo to this intercooler pipe. But like the intake, there are two ports that we can't forget, one for the N75 and the other for the diverter valve. So following a similar procedure, we can start by measuring the diameter of the intercooler pipe as well as the outlet of the turbo, just so we can get a gauge of what we want to make this out of. And in this case, the diameter of the intercooler piping is actually larger than the outlet of the turbo, which is totally fine because we know it's not gonna bottleneck. And similar to the intake, I think we can take some inspiration from the original charge pipe. I like how it routed at a right angle towards the intercooler piping, and it's really close to the right size and shape. If only it was a couple inches shorter. Plus, this charge pipe already has the bungs we need to attach the N75 and the diverter valve. Though if we wanted to, this N75 port could be relocated. I figured the next best step was to measure the actual distance to the 90 and from the 90 to the turbo. That way we could start coming up with some ideas. And in doing research for this, I found out that Forge makes a brushed aluminum version of this charge pipe. So I got to thinking, why don't we start by modifying that one? It's mostly the right size and already has the ports we need. Really, the only modification we would need to make on it is one cut. Then we would either just shorten it and have someone weld it together, or just attach the two ends with a silicone coupler. Then the only other part we'd need is that 90 degree silicone. Doing it this way, the only other thing we would have to worry about is bead rolling the end of those aluminum pipes so that they don't blow off. However, if we get a special tool, we can actually do this by hand. I think once we get those pieces, the intake and the charge pipe should come together rather easily. It's the next piece of the puzzle that might be a little more unknown to me though. This is where we venture into the more unknown part of the project. We are effectively going to need to modify or make a downpipe to get this system to work. As you can see, the outlet of that O2 pipe does not line up with the stock 225 downpipe. The turbo's in a completely different location, so that makes sense. My thought is we can use the stock 225 downpipe as a basis for our modification. So the first thing I did was remove the part of the downpipe that we know we're not going to need. Name Namely, that 90 degree bend at the top. It's not going to face that way at all anymore, so I decided to cut it off for simplicity. That way I could start working on it in the car. And don't worry, we're going to use a proper saw to square everything up. This was just to make the first part a lot easier. 
With that 90 degree portion chopped off, I reposition the downpipe to the bottom of the car to see where it's going to be sitting. This is already closer. The general idea is that we want a three inch downpipe the whole way. Our goal is to connect the O2 pipe through the GTI downpipe into the 225 downpipe. We know the GTI downpipe will attach to the O2 pipe, and we know the 225 downpipe is bent in a way that it accounts for the drive shaft that's in the way. So my thought is we just need to figure out where to connect them and connect them. I've got a buddy of mine coming over who has experience fabricating and welding, and I think he and I will be able to figure it out pretty easily. My main goal right now is to chop both of the pieces in such a way that all we have to do is connect them or add a couple pie cuts to connect them. In other words, all we're doing right now is testing the feasibility of my idea and if it'll actually work, or if we're gonna have to do something much more custom. So the first thing I need to do is take the end off of this GTI downpipe, likely up here where it's straight. And we're definitely gonna square up all the cuts. So in this case, we're gonna use a chop saw which can account for whatever angle we need to cut. And when it comes to the blade of choice, in this case, I believe a Harbor Freight Special will work just fine. I tossed the blade on and the first thing I did was square up the end of the 225 downpipe. And the most important part of my whole approach here is that I'm cutting off way less than I need to every time. It's a lot easier to make a second cut if needed than to reattach material. Once this piece was chopped and the rain started pouring down, I moved inside the garage and chopped the end off of the GTI downpipe. Remember, we don't at all need the bottom half of this since that's just gonna clash with the drive shaft. We just want the top part. And from here, we start a very long process in which we alternate between hopping under the car, reattaching everything we have, and then hopping back outside and making adjustments to make it fit just a little bit better. And honestly, the first thing you're looking for here is just general fitment. Both of these pieces need to fit under here, so I ended up shrinking both of them down quite a bit. I also went ahead and took some general measurements for the length so that I knew what ballpark I needed to be in. And once we got it to that point, I went ahead and started to try to assemble it for the first time. Remember, my goal isn't to get it to perfectly line up today. I really just want to get this to the point where I don't waste my friend's time when he comes over to help polish it up. So when that time comes, my hope is that there's only a couple cuts that we're going to have to make and a couple pie cuts we're going to have to add. I'm just doing all the general cuts today. It's also probably worth noting the difficulty of actually measuring this. What I saw when doing this and what you're currently seeing are two very different angles. If I'm being honest, I was having to do most of this by feel simply because there wasn't enough room to get my head in there. But from what I'm seeing, we are definitely getting very close. The cool thing about the GTI downpipe is it can be mounted in four different ways, which gives us quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to how to design the connection between these two pipes. But like I said, I'm gonna wait for someone who has fabrication experience to come over and help with that part because I don't really wanna mess that up. Overall though, we definitely made a ton of progress on testing the feasibility of the downpipe. From the looks of it, we really should only need one well-made pie cut to connect the two pieces. That and maybe a little bit of trimming on both of them. But we'll pick that up later when we actually have the welder in hand. With that being said, we generated a list with everything we're going to need to order to finish up the intake, hopefully, and the charge pipe, hopefully. And like normal, I always order more than I think I need just on the off chance that I need to jerry-rig something. But now that that order's placed, we're at the position where we need to wait again. Thankfully, we have a ton of stuff we can do in the meantime. We have to set up the wastegate, I'll be finishing up the downpipe next weekend, and we need to go through and clean up the entire engine bay of all its unneeded vacuum lines and systems that we can completely get rid of. Then it's really as simple as running the lines for the turbo and hopefully assembling everything for the first start. That is, that's how simple it'll be if our designs work the first time. 
I don't really know how it's going to go if I'm being honest, but that's half the fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support my channel. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.